Hey, this is Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. Today we're at this house and we're going to do a demonstration as to why does air leak out of the house? Why doesn't it just stay in the house and everything will be fine? Why does air leak out and why does new outside cold air leak in? Let's find out. So what is the stack effect? Well, it's when we warm the air, when we heat the air inside the house and the warm air rises, right? I mean, it's cold outside, we're heating the house inside, that warm air is going to rise and it's going to create positive pressure at the top of the house. And then that air is going to leak out of all the little leaks that it can get uh, out of the house through the uh, attic hatch, can lights, uh, up through wall assemblies, through electrical outlets and up through the walls, around pipe and wire holes, around the chimney chase and all the places it can escape out of the top of the house. And what that will do is create a suction at the bottom of the house that draws more uh, outside air in to replace the air that left. So we'll have negative pressure at the bottom, house is sucking at the bottom because it's blowing at the top. So this is what we talk about at Dr. Energy Saver and it's how we know what leaks are more important than others to seal in your house, how we get a priority. Well, today I'm going to prove it to you. Let's take a look here. It, the stack effect says that we would have positive pressure at the, the top of the house and we would have air leaking out, warm air leaking out of the house and of course the attic is vented so um, if it leaks to the attic it's out of the house, right? And then we're going to have negative pressure, right, negative, sucking air in at the bottom of the house, right, to replace the air that left. Okay, so house is sucking at the bottom, blowing at the top. Let's use a meter to show you, to quantify this stack effect. So this is a digital micromanometer, and it can measure very small differences in air pressure. So what we've done is we've taken this red hose and we've run it, here it is, we've run it to the bottom of the basement steps. Then we've taken the blue hose and we've run it upstairs to the second floor. Now I'm going to hook the hoses to my micromanometer so I can measure the pressure difference between the end of the hose that's in the basement and the end of the hose that's upstairs. And we'll just uh, wait a second to let it uh, equalize. So the upstairs compared to the basement is over four pascals positive. And that is the stack effect right there. It's negative at the bottom and positive at the top relative to the bottom. So the house is like a big chimney, air wanting to flow upward. And so to, to uh, demonstrate that difference, if I just switch these hoses and swap ports, what I'll find is, well, what is the basement compared to upstairs? The upstairs is four and a half pascals positive compared to downstairs. Well, now we know the downstairs is of course the opposite, four and a half pascals negative compared to upstairs. So we have just proven that there is negative pressure, the house is sucking at the bottom and there's positive pressure at the top, the house is blowing out. Let me show you more and what that really means to you. Now what we're going to do is see what is the pressure difference between the first floor and the outside. And this will be affected by wind, of course. Um, we see that there's very little pressure difference across this front door. Look, it's 0.3 pascals. It's bouncing around a little bit because of the wind, the little breeze we have today, but very little pressure difference between the first floor and the outside. Hmm, that's because this is the middle of the house. So if we have positive pressure at the top and negative pressure at the bottom, sucking air in, in the middle there's a place where it doesn't do much of either. And here we are in the middle of the house. Now let's go to the second floor and I'll show you what's happening up there. Now let me put this hose out the second floor window and let's see what the t pressure difference is from the second floor to the outside. Look at that, we have seven pascals difference between the second floor and the outside. The, the second floor being positively pressurized and pushing air out of the house. 
Now, wind will make a difference. Uh, if it's a windy day, it's a little bit breezy today. So on a windy day, you know your house leaks more, uh, both in and out at different places in the house. Now let's see what happens when we measure the pressure difference from the second floor ceiling to the attic. And we see that we have over two Pascal's pressure difference from the second floor to the attic. So the second floor is positive and the attic is negative. And this explains why air moves through a hole in the attic ceiling or through the ducts, even when the air handler is not on because we have ducts in the attic, we have duct leaks, or around the chimney or up through wall assemblies. Air wants to move from the inside of the house to the attic because we, because of the stack effect, we are positively pressurized in the top of the house. All right, here we are in the attic and there's one kind of leak that's more important than attic leaks than A priority leaks and we call them double A leaks and that is leaks from ducts. And here we are, the air handler is running and if we look at this uh, duct system with a thermal imaging camera. Now this happens to be a hydro air system. There's a boiler in the basement running hot water to a radiator in that air handler. It's, the air handler is a cabinet with a blower in it. And we're blowing the air over that uh, radiator and uh, getting heat out of it and running the heat through the ducts to the rooms. But look at, you can see the lack of insulation and the hot spots uh, in this system. And let's go over here and we see that these ducts are not sealed. I mean, it's just sheet metal bent together. I mean, look at here, here's a big hole. Here's a hole in the duct. And if I stick this uh, tube in that hole, let's see how many Pascal's difference that is. Wow, this, these are the biggest pressure differences and temperature differences that we will find in a house. 77 Pascal's of air pressure pushing air out of this hole and I hold my hand here I could feel it blowing at me like a blow dryer because it's warm air it's winter time it's trying to heat the house and I can feel this air just blasting out of this hole and there's a hole over there and a seam over here and over here and over there and where the ducts go through the drywall so all this air you are pumping forcibly pumping not just the stack effect but you have a big 2000 CFM perhaps blower inside that cabinet forcing air through the supply ducts and sucking air through the return duct. That's the return box right there and the return duct goes in that end of the air handler and all the supplies of the heated air comes out this end and we are pumping air that we just paid to heat into this attic. So these are double A priority leaks ducts in unconditioned spaces, particularly attics, which are hostile environments. Absolutely amazing, and we can fix this for you. Now we talk a lot about can lights and how they leak. Let's take a look, and this particular can light, it has holes in the housing. There's also a hole around the drywall to the housing, and I can stick this hose right up into the attic. And we can check the pressure difference across that can light. We know that there's holes because we can see them. And look at that, we, again, we have about uh, over two Pascal's, two and a half Pascal's pressure difference between here and the other side of that drywall. So basically the house is pushing air through that can light into the attic. And of course, it's a vented attic, so every cubic foot of air that we paid to heat that goes out of there it's costing us money, but besides that, it has to be replaced with new air that leaks in at the bottom of the house to replace the air that left. Let's go in the basement and take a look at what's going on there. Here we are in the basement. So let's see if there really is negative pressure like we talk about between the basement and the outdoors. So let's open this window. First thing I feel is a blast of cold air against my face. It's uh, about 32 degrees out there right now. And I'm gonna stick this hose out the window and close the window without pinching it. And I have negative seven Pascals, negative eight. Big pressure difference. This house is sucking air in at the bottom. As we showed you, blowing air out at the top and not doing very much in the middle. We've proven that and quantified that today with our digital micro manometer.
check this out over here. This house is a little unusual and it has a garage door in the basement. And so we have air leakage around the garage door, but that doesn't, that should reduce the negative pressure in the basement. So it's not uh, giving us a false test, but we can see at the very lowest part of this house, very lowest, right along the basement floor, we have 11 pascals difference, negative 11 inside compared to outside. So this house is sucking at the bottom and as the warm air rises through the house, it is blowing out at the top. So to complete our demonstration of stack effect, I'm gonna use this smoke. Now this is a heatless smoke. There's no heat associated with it. It just kind of rides along and whatever air streams are there. So just to show you what happens here, we see this smoke just blowing right in. Okay, so air leaks in at the bottom of the house and it leaks out at the top of the house. So what does it all mean? Well, at Dr. Energy Saver, we know how houses work. And we know that to work in the middle of the house uh, with uh, door sweeps and weather stripping on doors and replacing windows, well, all that's good, but it's not the first priority in making your house more energy efficient. The top of the house is the A priority, A for attic at Dr. Energy Saver. We're, we wanna focus on sealing your attic first because if no air leaks out, then no new air can leak in because the house is already full of air. The only way new outside cold air could leak in is if air that's inside the house that you paid the heat leaked out. So A priority. Second priority is, as you can see, the bottom of the house. Now this house has a basement, some houses have a crawl space, or the house may just have a slab, but the, the leaks at the lowest part of the house are the B priority, and then finally C priority leaks are in the middle. So you don't wanna go sealing C priority leaks and waste that effort and expense without dealing with A and B first. At Dr. Energy Saver, we do a blower door test to quantify the total air leaks in your house. The blower door exaggerates the air leaks that are in your house and it puts all that leakage in one place where we can measure it and compare it to a standard that uh, the Department of Energy uses to calculate whether a house leaks more air than it should. When the blower door test is running, all leaks are created equal, but we know that when the blower door is taken away, and that's how you live, you don't have a blower door running all the time, that this, what we've shown you in this video, is how a house really works. So we wanna focus on the top of the house first, the bottom of the house second, and the middle of the house last. If you have a house that you'd like to make more comfortable and energy efficient, if you have rooms that are colder than other rooms in the wintertime, or rooms that won't cool in the summertime, call Dr. Energy Saver, we'd love to help you.